Good morning, everyone. This is Baroness Ana de la Sara of Dragon's Mist. I wanted to take an opportunity to do a quick down and dirty lesson on diapering, or as most people call it, diapering. So what I'm gonna use today is just a number two pencil. I have a sheet that I have pre-painted with some practice boxes on it. You don't necessarily have to go to this extent. You can use a regular piece of paper and paint it in later. Um, this just was on hand and was quick and easy for me. Also, you're gonna need a ruler. Um, the measuring units don't necessarily matter. I tend to use both centimeters and inches. So, diapering is a technique that was used throughout quite a bit of the Middle Ages with regards to decorative design in books. Specifically, you will see it in a lot of backgrounds, and you will also see white work um, often in margins and other spaces. Um, diapering in particular tends to be the work that fills in all of this quote-unquote blank space back here. So this is all diapering, this is all diapering, things like that. So Often when you see it in this context, it's very overwhelming to the eye. And what I want to do with you today is take a basic design and break it down so it's easy to reproduce. <clears throat> so what I'm going to do first is I am going to take my ruler and I am going to basically measure out increments. They can vary in size depending on what your work looks like. I tend to like to work in very geometrical patterns. Um, which, handily enough, were quite popular in our time period. By the by, you can mark on top of painted gouache with a number two pencil. You can also paint over a number two pencil marking, so it makes a really handy tool if you have a piece that you've already done your base coat on and you just want to add some detail work afterward. So I'm creating some stripes. My intent is to close this up and make it into essentially a checker grid. As with everything in historic, uh, historic reproduction, they don't have to be absolutely perfect. We're aiming for something um, that is visually stimulating. So I have my lines. Now I'm going to measure the other way. And fill that in. So often what I will do is, in a work that I, usually an original that I'm working on, I will go through and I will paint my base layer. And then when I'm ready to add in the diapering, I will come back and like I'm doing now, use a number two pencil to draw in my grid. Now, at this point, you can choose to outline your grid with a marker, usually black, we definitely recommend archival for any sort of painting projects you're doing, as that way it does not discolor with time or age. Um, however, if you want it to be slightly more understated, you can leave it as is and simply paint over it. So now I'm going to take my handy dandy paintbrush and some gouache. This is just white. I am reanimating, if you will. And for this particular one, I'm just going to do every other square white. Ooh. Consistency of my paint is not stellar yet. I probably need to keep mixing. Oh, 
Hopefully you can see the contrast fairly well. I apologize. I realize the value of these colors is pretty similar. Thankfully, this is just a practice sheet, so I'm trying to get the idea to you, and it doesn't have to be perfect necessarily. All right, so the other cool thing that you can do to really vary up your design is you can take these practice sheets and play with the way that your designs work. You can leave all of the boxes painted the same color. You can paint them alternating colors. You can paint three different colors alternating. You can do all sorts of very interesting things with just your base color. And if you take a look in period, you will see a ton of examples of various um, color usage. You will also see quite a lot of gold being used in the diapering. Um, I imagine it's because it was very small, so very small pieces of gold um, that were essentially scraped off of larger pieces could be used for just adding a tiny bit of shine into the background. So it was a really good use of resources that would otherwise essentially be thrown out. All right, now I am going to move on to a different color for visual uh, clarity. So please also understand this is not a color palette I would necessarily choose. Um, I am using what I have on hand and what is easy to see. All right, so we have our alternating colors. Now for this design, what I've decided to do is just place a little dot, little dot in the middle. Very simple. All right, that's pretty visually. Uh, visually bright for you. And now, because we're crazy, we're going to move to a fourth color. I believe this is black. All right. We're going to take the very tip of our paintbrush. We're just going to draw a tiny little box around our red dot. And obviously, the tip of my brush is not as pristine. Ah, there it goes. It's decided to behave. Not as pristine as it could be. In its defense, I'm moving it through colors fairly rapidly, so. Little box around the red dot. Little box. Again, the accuracy of the shape is very lenient in this scenario, especially when you look at the complexity and sizing of what you're really going to be using this on. You don't need to be super concerned about things being perfect. All right, so the last bit I'm going to do for this particular example is just connect the edges of my boxes now. So just a nice straight line, nice line, nice line. Oh, sounds like my puppy wants to come in and join our class. He'll have to wait till we're done. All 
I find that when I need to draw quote unquote straight lines, I tend to do best when I have very short distances to cross. I don't have a super steady hand. I, I guess I have a steadier hand than some, but really I cheat by going from one point to another real quick and in very short succession. So there we go. Now, well, I said I was going to stop, but if we want to do, you know, add even more to this, you could decide that you want to add a, a stripe or something into your off color boxes. You can play with the thickness and texture of your paint. One of the things that I love to do is to go in, partially fill a space, clean my brush, and then go back and essentially blend it into a much, much finer version of that color, if you will. Um, it allows specifically with white, but in this case, I chose black. My apologies. Uh, specifically with white, it allows for some very interesting color um, monochromatic effects, things like that. So I recommend you play with it. I recommend that if you have some time, which we all do now, sit down, make a practice sheet for yourself, draw out some lines. Here's another example of a practice sheet that I've made for a different class. You'll see it's the same grid. We've got multiple designs here that different people have done. This is done by um, Her Ladyship, uh, Margaret Fay. I don't recall who these designs were done by, unfortunately, but they're very beautiful and they all vary just a little. And then <clears throat> here was another version where I decided to uh, make a Christmas decoration, I guess. So I do have documentation for a bit more information about diapering um, or diapering. If you would like to uh, gain access to that, I would be happy to share. Please send me an email or I will see uh, if Her Excellency Vivian would be willing to uh, link them in the commentary of this post. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you guys have a great afternoon.